The early archaic period has some of the most iconic and recognizable styles of projectile points in North American archaeology. Well-known styles from this time period include Thebes, Dovetail, Pine Tree Corner Notch, and more. One of the lesser-known styles from this time period is the Matcorkle Bifurcate Point. These points and several other styles with similar lobed bases date to the end of the early archaic period, just around the beginning of the middle archaic period. McCorkle points are one of my favorite styles and what I'm flint napping in this video. Matcorkle points are grouped in a category of points called the bifurcate cluster. All styles which occur around the same time and are often found together in the same archaeological context. Other bifurcate styles include Lacroix, Rice Lobed, St. Albans, and Kanawha points. Matcorkle points are medium to large size points known for their distinct lobed bases with deep bifurcations. These points are serrated, although not always quite as distinctly and well spaced as with styles like pine tree points. What's most distinctive about McCorkle points is their bases. The base is bifurcated by a third notch, which extends upward into the base. I've been unable to find any mention in archaeological literature for a functional purpose to the bifurcation. It was likely a stylistic choice but perhaps it was for a specific tile of haft. On archaeological examples, the bifurcation notch is characterized by a distinctive Hertzian cone notching flake scar on one face and fine pressure flaking retouch on the opposite edge margin. The base on most examples of McCorkle points is heavily ground to prevent hafting lashing from being cut. Most examples range from 40 to 84 millimeters with the average being around 45 to 55 millimeters. Rare, large examples have been found that are up to 120 millimeters in length. My McCorkle points tend to have a bit deeper bifurcation than archaeological examples. One of my flint napping mentors, Don Gilson, makes his McCorkle points like this, and his work is what inspired me to make points like these.
the bifurcate cluster dates to around 9,000 to 8,500 radiocarbon years before present, right near the end of the early archaic period. These styles of points occur in the Midwest, the Mid-South, and extend eastward into some of the eastern seaboard. Being around the transition of the early and middle archaic periods, bifurcate phase people were taking part in some of the cultural changes that archaeologists used to subdivide the archaic period. Native American peoples during this time were generally using less curated tools, like long-lasting hafted points, and more expedient tools, like quickly produced flakes for cutting. People were also using more local church sources and less of non-local sources of stone. This also means that people were using more poor quality sources of chert because that's what was more readily available than high quality chert. This point that I'm flint napping is made from Wyandotte shirt, also commonly known as Indiana Hornstone. This material originates in Harrison and Crawford counties of southern Indiana and was a favorite shirt source of many prehistoric Native Americans, as well as modern flint nappers. Due to the large geographic area that my corporal points are found in, there are a large number of materials that they were made from. Any material from an area where these bifurcate points would have been made archaeologically is probably used and is appropriate for a reproduction. Well-known materials that these points were made from, other than Wyandotte chert, include Coshocton and Mercer cherts, Flint Ridge Flint, Attica chert, Burlington chert, Cobden Flint, Kentucky Hornstone, Dover chert, Fort Payne chert, Conowa chert, Pennsylvania Jasper, Onondaga chert, quartzite, quartz, and many more materials.
When I first began making McCorkle points, I struggled in how to get the notches and stem right. The process I use now begins by creating a stem that will become the base of the point. Where this stem shoulders the blade edge, I begin notching inwards but also slightly upward. When the notches are as deep or nearly as deep as I would like them, I begin notching upward in the middle of the base to create the bifurcation. It is then just a matter of adjusting all three notches and the size of the basal lobes until I'm happy with how it looks. McCorkle points likely serve as both projectiles and knife blades. Smaller bifurcate cluster points, such as LaCroix, may have been intended for use solely as at lateral dart points, although it would be unsurprising to find evidence that they were also used as cutting tools. By the early archaic period, the Pleistocene megafauna had become extinct, and the animals available to people as food were largely the types of animals still found today. Animal remains from early archaic sites, such as the famous Modoc rock shelter, give archaeologists an idea of what people during this time were eating. Early archaic Native Americans were hunting white-tailed deer, tree squirrel, turkey, rabbit, turtles, fish, and aquatic habitat mammals and birds. While early archaic people were less dependent on animal-based foods than Paleo-Indian period people, they did not exploit plant food resources quite like how later period people did. However, early archaic people did exploit many of the same kinds of plant foods that later archaic period people did. Two of the most important varieties of these plant foods were hickory nuts and acorns, which were quite abundant in the deciduous forests covering eastern North America during this time. Due to the narrow time frame of bifurcate points in the archaeological record, sites from this phase are somewhat rare. When something other than a simple camp is found, it is especially valuable in terms of what it will tell archaeologists. The Yorker site is one of these special sites because it is a cemetery for bifurcate phase people. The Yorker site is located in the White River Valley 
of Davies County in southwest Indiana. 17 McCorkle points were found here, which identify the site as belonging to the bifurcate phase of the early archaic period. Other archaeological materials recovered here include cremated human bone, red ochre, 11 animal canines that have holes perforated in them, bifacial drill fragments, all-like bone artifacts, and small marine snail shells that were from Florida and were likely used as beads. There are three archaeological features here that were identified as the graves, containing human bone. These were sprinkled with red ochre, an earth pigment that consists of iron oxide naturally contained in clay and sand, which has been used as a popular pigment for Native American peoples for thousands of years. These burials had no signs of burning in them, which means that the remains of these people were cremated elsewhere and then transported to the site for burial.